very quickly and um, you can jump straight in there with that. So the first thing to note is there are a bunch of different ways of doing everything that I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you uh, the, the method that I use. I'm sure you'll find better and more appropriate methods as you go along uh, according to the way that you work. So here I'm going to take this image here called scooter.tiff. Now your image when it comes from the scanner will probably be titled something like scan um, 0001.tiff or something like that. Um, and I'm going to pick it up, I'm dragging it and I'm going to drop it onto Photoshop and up it pops. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of, of this um, distracting bluish grey um, background and this two ways I can do that. One is to come in here to view, screen mode and come down to full screen mode with menu bar. Um, the other way I can do that is just to press the F on the keyboard and I'm going to, when I know of a shortcut I'm going to share that with you each time. So that takes away that, um, that nasty background and just lets me concentrate straight away onto this image. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at this um, very close up so let's have a look at actual pixels. I'm going to do that because I want to make sure that it's in focus. So now I need to move around. There's two ways that I can move around. One of them is to come up to Window and I can come down to uh, the Navigator and I can grab this little square here and I can track around the image to see that it's in focus and it appears to be more or less in focus. The other way that I can do this, a shortcut, is to move the cursor onto the onto the image and press the space bar and it turns into this little hand. Now that's the way I'm that's the method I'm going to use from now on because it enables me to get rid of this window. Just like that. Goodbye. Get rid of that window and I can work a lot quicker. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to reduce the size of this image now. There's several ways I can do this. I'm going to use the zoom out. You can see here look it says that I can use the uh, Apple key and I can use um, minus in order to reduce the size so I'm going to do that or it said let's have a look at that again it said uh, here we go fit on screen look Apple zero so I think I'll try that one there we go bingo right now I'm going to brighten it up now I can go straight in here and start to brighten the image up with image adjustments if I want to but um, I'm going to use a slightly that's slightly better way. I'm going to imagine this as my negative and if if for instance you do have your image as a negative now looking something like this that because the scanner is set up as such then you can invert that image you can do that very quickly by pressing Apple and I on the keyboard and it'll switch it back around into a positive image. So over here I have my layers uh, window open and if yours isn't open already then you can come into window and layers and that will bring it up to the front and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to drop onto this another layer. Now this is kind of like adding on an acetate sheet on top of an image and as I do my adjustments on this acetate sheet the image underneath is not going to be affected so I'm going to keep effectively I'm going to keep my original image undamaged underneath all the rest. So here we are if I come back into my layers I can see now that I've got my original background image and I've got my curves layer. and I'm going to click on here, double click that and here I'm straight into my curve now and I'm moving the cursor over here and I grab the middle line and push this and you'll notice as I push it to the top left hand corner the image is starting to brighten up. That doesn't look too bad. That'll do. Now if I want to increase the contrast in this image I can grab the image down here and start to push it around. I can flatten it out or I can make it more contrasty. So I'm going to go with a little bit more contrasty. So in the dark room we'd be changing the grade of the paper at this point by um, changing the, the the color filter or using a different grade of paper. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to leave that there. That's contrasty enough for me right now. Um, oh, I just like to actually I'd like to kind of tweak that a little bit just to make it slightly brighter or at least just have a look what it looks like. And here's a, here's a nifty way of doing that. I'm going to just click once on that spot and then I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to just push them around a little bit more. That's good. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So um, are those highlights a little bit too bright? If I were too a bit too bright I could grab this here and pull them down a bit. There we go. You know what, I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in there and have a look at that, that 
highlight there just to make sure the detail isn't blossoming out and I'm going to do that by pressing Apple and plus on the keyboard zooming right in now I'm going to press the space bar and drag the image around here okay that looks okay that's not too bad so now to zoom out again I'm going to press Apple 0 and it fits it back back out there onto the screen so I mean I could just leave it there that will do you know as we print stuff that's fine um, I could just leave that but maybe I want to kind of draw your eye into the middle because there's this distracting area over here which um, this highlight which is kind of coming to the edge of the frame and maybe I want to sort of bring him forward a little bit even more so um, what I'm going to do now is is effectively dodging and burning and there are two ways that we can do this um, you know I can just come over here with this dodge tool to to reduce the exposure effectively on a make sure this is the active layer to reduce the exposure I'm just making that brush bigger by pressing the um, open uh, the close brackets on the keyboard um, next to the enter key so um, yeah I, know, I could I could start to hold this back here but if I do this then I'm gonna be working on this um, original background layer and the deal was of course that I wanted to work on sort of layers that I popped on top so I could keep this background layer um, undamaged, untouched, so I can always go back to that. You, your Photoshop skills will get better um, and the learning curve is very very steep as well so you'll look back on images you made in the first year and in the second year and think wow I can definitely do a better job of that now I've learned Photoshop so much better um, and you'll probably come back to it, those images and if you've got the original untouched base image here then you can just delete these layers and start again sort of thing so that's why to, to leave this one undamaged so uh, what I'm going to do instead then is I'm going to pop another layer on here and I'm going to do that by coming to the bottom and I'm going to add on something called a gradient layer now this gradient here has as you can see left a layer and you can see this gradient here has appeared in my layers window it's left a layer of dark to transparent dark to transparent bottom to top and it's chosen as the as the color in here the foreground color now if that foreground color is set to pink then it would put a pink gradient on you can change that foreground color by clicking over here so just for now I'm going to OK that and if I wanted to change this foreground color you can see that I can do that by clicking in here and it will go to a new color there's the current color there's the new one I can OK that um, if I come in here and put a new gradient on then suddenly I've got a red one okay well clearly I don't want that so I'm going to grab this gradient drop it into the bin like that and I'm going to come back here and click on that tiny little um, box there to restore the default black and white form background so this is dark on this off but it kind of isn't the vibe that I wanted so um, I want to change that I don't want it to be a linear one, I want it to be a a radial one, but now I've got a dark spot in the middle and what I wanted was a light spot in the middle and dark around the outside, so we call that a sort of vignetting effect so I'm just going to reverse that I'm also going to dither it and I'm going to type in the scale at 150, that makes it as big as possible now I want the middle of this to be closer to his face so I'm now going to drag it as well, you can see how that's moving around I'm going to drag it up and that's pretty dramatic right there um, in fact it's, it's clearly clearly been burn, um, burned quite a lot and that, that really wasn't the effect that I wanted I wanted a more subtle effect just to draw your eye in sort of unwittingly so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to change how that layer works and you, and you can have a really good play with all these different things here but I'm just going to use soft light soft light affects the shadows but doesn't affect the highlights quite as much and you can see the difference there straight away so what I've also done is change the order of those those layers there and you can see the difference that made putting the gradient on top of the curve layer it made a huge difference and so he's kind of jumped right out there now with that um, that term gradient layer so I've effectively burnt around the edges and lifted him off a bit well, we didn't need to see that still his face is a little bit too dark and so is this area here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this mask here I'm going to paint onto this mask to hold him back any, even more the effect of that will be to lift him out even further the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to come over here to my tools palette I'm going to select the brush tool you can see there that the shortcut for the brush tool we press B and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the 
layer mask, so that's active. Did you notice how on the actual layer it's look I get a, a no entry type symbol? So that I can't work on there. So I've got to work on the gray, on the layer mask here. And I'm just gonna spray onto the image. Now you can't see much has happened there because my opacity, this is this spray brush is set to 32%. If I set that to 100%, it'll be in the flow. It'll be more dramatic. You can see now that that is having much more of an effect. It isn't the effect that I want. Here you are. You can look on this layer mask and see where I've sprayed, and that's held back this effect here to that tune. Well, that's way too much. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete all of that. A couple of ways I can do that I can Apple A or select all to select the entire image, but don't forget I'm only working in this layer mask right here. I can just hit the delete key and that deletes everything that I sprayed onto there. I'm now going to press Apple D or D select D select. So I'm back to how I was originally. Um, I'm going to make this slightly more subtle. Let's just have a look. There it is without the without the gradient. There it is with the gradient. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity so it's much more subtle, much better to work in lots of little strokes. And I've made my brush really big, so big sweeping, lots of big sweeping strokes rather than tiny little definite ones is a is going to be work much better. And I'm just going to paint over here a little bit just to lift him off. Uh, maybe I'd like, I'd like that cricket bat to come out a little bit. Perhaps the thing that's behind him a little. I'm going to lighten up this sun down here a little bit. Kind of leave the bucket as it is. And a little bit on his feet here in the front of the trolley, front of the scooter. I'm going to use the um, uh, open brackets key to reduce the size of that brush a little. So I can really focus on his face. I'm going to zoom in a bit with the Apple and Plus keys. And the space bar to drag the image down. And again, all I'm doing is working it. You can see this happening over here. You can see the effect this is happening, that this is having. There we go. And now I'm going to use the Apple and Minus or Apple Zero to zoom back out again. So here's without. And here's with you can see he's lifted off. It's quite dramatic that. So I'm going to reduce the overall feel of that gradient by reducing the opacity down to let's say 70%. I'm going to look at that before, with and without. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. So there we have it. That's as much as I need to do now. I'm not going to make any more adjustments. I've uh, opened my raw image from the scanner. Uh, I've, I've brightened it up a little bit and I've burnt it in. That's as much as we would have done in, in the dark room. It just remains for me now to flatten this image. So I'm going to flatten these layers and then I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to save three different versions. The first version is this layer with, um, with the layers. Sorry, is this version with the layers. So I'm going to do File, Save As. You can see the shortcut for Save As is um, see the sort the shortcut for save as is Apple shift and S save as and I'm going to call it scooter but I'm going to call it scooter PSD Photoshop scooter Photoshop document I'm going to make a new folder for it which I'm going to call um, scooter boy oops scooter rather than scotter boy I want to save that in there you can see that clock working away, saving that's quite a big file, I think. Now I'm going to flatten the image to save another version. Layer flatten. So that image is now flat, no layers. I can't work on this anymore. We're kind of done with that. And I'm going to use my shortcut for save as, which is Apple, Shift, and S. This time I'm going to save it as a TIFF. Now this TIFF file is big, but it's uncompressed. That means none of the detail is lost. You see, image compression none. I'm going to leave all that as it is. OK. 
So that all the, every time we, if you compress an image, if you make it smaller, something has to give. Something's got to get away. So you lose you lose image information when you compress things. So TIFFs are, or at least this TIFF we've just selected is uncompressed. Now the final version I'm going to save is one that I want to email to um, to my friend who knows the Scooter Boy, and I'm going to put file save as. And this one's going to be a JPEG. You're perhaps familiar with JPEGs from your camera. If it says, do you want me to save this a JPEG, it's compressing it when it does that. Far better to save the image raw um, and use the big old processors in these Macs rather than use a tiny little processor in your camera to save it. So save as JPEG. It's going to give me options. I can save, I can make it into a very, very small file down here. But the quality of the image will be very poor. Or I can make it into a, a larger file. I'm going to go for about eight. And the image of the image quality here it shouldn't be shouldn't lose too much detail. It's still a huge file, so this is going to be fine. Too small, too, way too big to email, but anyway, it will serve the purpose here. Okay, so now I'm going to close this up with my Apple W. Close that window. Here's my Scooter Boy folder. I'm going to double click that to open it up, and I have the three versions. I have my um, TIFF version, this is a huge file, I hadn't realised they were so big. Here's the PSD, here's, which is 324 megabytes, it's enormous and unnecessarily large. Uh, here is the TIFF 155, again, ridiculous, and this uh, much smaller, and still, yet, far too large um, image. But you can see the processes from that. Okay.